<laughs> Nightcore! You love it, I love it, but I really couldn't have thought of a better intro. <laughs> Nightcore is a more recent aesthetic, heavily inspired by medieval and renaissance clothing, but mostly by knights and warriors of those time periods. As someone who has a very historical slash cottagecore slash grandma core aesthetic, this is really up my alley. These fake flowers have a smell to them gonna give me a headache. <laughs> now I have noticed that this aesthetic is a bit muted in the colors, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. However, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna put a lot of color into it. And as many of us know at this point, historical costuming is much more colorful than we generally have known due to fabric colors dimming over time, as well as, well, Hollywood. We are making two pieces in this video. I will basically be taking Nightcore and making it colorful. That's it. I really have nothing else to say. So let's get started. Day one. <laughs> so uh, you want to hear a funny story? It's it. It's not funny to me, but maybe it'll be funny to you. So if you haven't noticed, for the past few weeks, my sound and my mic have not been working so well. And for the life of me, I could not figure out what's happening until this morning when I looked at my mic and realized that I had plugged it in to the wrong plug. For over a month, I've been having this issue and all it was was plugging it into the right slot. Cool. I'm wearing my Edwardian overalls, or as I like to call them, my toddler dungarees. I love them, but I do think they look a little bit like that. <laughs> okay, ignore the lawn mowing and the talking in the background. There's a lot happening today. <laughs> as far as patterns, we're gonna do this one. Shush, we didn't use this last time. We didn't use this in the last video, you shush. And we're again going to change the pattern, but um, I'm actually gonna use the like little gauntlet sleeve things this time, which is very fun. I did just stash them in here. So it's gonna take me forever to like find the pattern pieces again. So that's gonna be fun. Uh, let me show you the fabric though. So I thrifted two, should I back you up a little bit more so you can see me? Probably. I thrifted two of these. I'm like assuming that they're table runners, but at the bottom they have, if you can see it, they have this like pointed edge and I think that would make a cool tabard inspired dress bodice thingy. So um, we're gonna do that this time and I think it's gonna look really fun. But first I have to find all of the pattern pieces. <laughs> Let's go. So after finding all the pattern pieces, I then draped the fabric over me to see if I wanted the longer edge at the front or at the side. And I was having a bit too much fun playing dress up with the fabric. <laughs> After pinning the pieces, I made sure to leave enough room for the skirt section of the tabard and kind of guesstimated the appropriate width of the skirt section. You can also see here that I gave myself a bit more room in the bust as last time I used this pattern, I needed to add a dart and I thought this could fix that problem. It was then time to attach the center back to side back and the center fronts to the side front sections. And I immediately had technical issues. <laughs> Are you really doing a sewing project if your sewing machine doesn't fight you the entire way? I kept the fabric and the lining attached at the bottom and sewed them simultaneously. This ended up being an easy and quick way to do both layers. After making sure that each piece looked somewhat correct on me, I then attached both layers at the shoulder seams.
and I honestly could not believe how smoothly and quickly this project was going so far. Rosma, it's me, Anastasia. Okay, so I think I figured out what to do for my second project. I thrifted this tablecloth. I didn't realize how like striped it was when I bought it. Um, that's fine. <laughs> We're not gonna pattern match it because I also have this red thing. <laughs> Hey, it's Editing Brie. Uh, apparently, I was so excited that I forgot to actually explain my idea. <laughs> so we are using this pattern once again, but deleting the skirt and making a more doublet looking thing, which if you don't know, was a jacket kind of item usually worn by men in the Renaissance and Baroque eras. I like these peplum areas and wanted to find a way to mix this with this kind of front tab that you see here if that makes any sense. <laughs> okay, back to past me. If I fold it this way, will it be matched on both sides? No, <laughs> it won't be. When I was a sophomore in college for our final project for the year, we had to make like an 1880s bustle gown, you know, it wasn't It was in a large bustle, but it was those tiny bustles when you're going more towards the 1890s. We had to pattern match one thing on that project and most people chose like the bodice piece, which was very smart. I did not do that. I decided that because a skirt was more geometric as far as shapes, it would be easier to pattern match them. I don't know, I don't think I was right on that. So I chose like this striped pattern, this huge, large, large stripe. I cut them out, pattern matching them, and then I went to sew them and I was like four panels deep and I realized that I had sewn them all together incorrectly, but it was like 11 p.m. at night, so I worked really hard to not undo those skirt panels. I just um, made it work. To this day, I don't know how I did that. I think I was so tired, my brain went into like another realm of existence, but I also kind of tried myself a little bit. I hate pattern matching with stripes. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. So we're avoiding it for this project. Anyway, I'm gonna figure out how to make this work <laughs> and I'll get back to you. For all of you probably yelling at your screens right about now, I did realize that folding the fabric the other way was smarter. And after placing the center back and side front pieces, I started changing the pattern pieces of the peplum areas. I wanted some of them to be a bit wider for dramatic effect. Then it was time to work on the other red fabric. This fabric would serve as both my contrasting fabric on the outside, as well as the lining for the entire bodice. So every pattern piece got laid out and cut out on this fabric. I also added little like epaulets. I don't quite know what to call them, but uh, you'll see later what I mean, as well as the sleeves. I then stitched the peplum pieces, attaching the outer fabric to the lining, clipping the corners and pushing those corners as far out as I could to keep the shape.
I really like the effect of being able to see the bright red lining underneath the more muted, darker fabric. Then I started sewing the bodice pieces together. The next day, I decided to join the lower sleeve and upper sleeve together. This was honestly for laziness reasons, but I do see examples of like a short sleeve with a secondary contrasting fabric over it. Uh, I don't know, I'm trying to explain away why I did this. <laughs> and at this point, my outer bodice, lining, and sleeves were all done, as well as these shoulder pieces that I added some interfacing to. It was now time to attach the peplum. And yes, I did wear my pajamas for most of this day. Sometimes it's just what you gotta do. I really like how all these peplum pieces are separate. I think it gives this piece an interesting look as well as being surprisingly simple to add to the bodice. I thought it would be much harder, but it definitely wasn't. It was quite easy. I knew I had a lot of grommet making ahead of me, and I had noticed that some examples I pulled up seemed to have buttons on these doublets. So I decided to make these large buttonhole tabs and made matching buttons as well. Then it was time to start attaching the lining to the bodice. Okay, today is finishing touches, which always make me scared because not only is this two projects to do finishing touches on, but finishing touches always take like three times longer than you think they're going to. So <laughs> I'm gonna try to finish it by today. Ooh, hopefully. I finished sewing the bodice. I didn't do any hand stitching uh, because I was getting a little tired of these projects, sorry to say. And I don't care too much about stitches showing on the outside. It doesn't really bother me. But going back to the tabard, I noticed the sides were a bit too large on me, so I slimmed those down a little bit. I then tucked both the outer shell and lining in and ironed them down and top stitched them to make nice finished edges. It was then time to add the million grommets to this tabard, and it was time to take out my grommet making muscles. I then added these grommets ever so slightly off camera because I am good at filming. So by the end, I had one grommet on each sleeve and two on each shoulder of the doublet to thread the ribbon through. Uh, this kind of looks like a duck, I just noticed. <laughs> and a million on the front and sides of the tabard. Not really, but it felt like it. And with that, it's time to show you the final results.
Okay, it's a lot colder than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> My braids were pretty much just falling apart by the end of that. So some final thoughts, both the tabard and the doublet ended up being a little, little bit too large, but it is baked goods, cookies, and bread season, so I'm not gonna complain about that. For some reason, the red doublet gives me Star Wars Queen Amidala, 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 Amidala. I should have looked this up before I started. <laughs> gives me Star Wars, whatever her face is, Natalie Portman vibes. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it looking Star Wars-y, it just wasn't my intention. I didn't quite know how I would feel making more costumey pieces. I feel like I always make pieces that are slightly costumey, but something that I know I can integrate into my more modern closet slightly more modern closet. <laughs> and I don't know if I can with either of those pieces, but I still had a really fun time and I still love them. So I don't, I don't regret it. I was a little tired of sewing at the end of these projects. So for the next video, we will be taking a little bit of a break, but it is going to be something very fun. I'll give you a hint. It is inspired by something from the film, Crimson Peak. I think you might be able to guess what I'm talking about. But until then, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you had a good time and uh, like and subscribe if you would like to. And I hope to see you back here next time. Bye.